Okay, so going back to the basketball, Carolee made 27 out of 45 free throws and Sonia made 24 out of 40 free throws. Who is the better free throw shooter? So if we take Carolee, she made 27 out of 45. And if we take Sonia, she made 24 out of 40. And you could say, well, Carolee made more shots than Sonia. But that's because she took more shots. So you have to, you have to um, compare them by their percentages or by their proportion rather than who actually made more shots. So if I look at these, both of these fractions will reduce. This one reduces by 9. So this is 9 times 3 and 9 times 5. So that's 3 over 5. And this one reduces because 4 goes into both of them. So this is 4 times 6. And this is 4 times 10, so these reduce. And that gives me 6 over 10. But what I noticed about that 6 over 10 was that it's not fully reduced. So that means I didn't pick the big enough number to begin with. So probably starting out, I should have divided by 8 first. But if you don't succeed the first time, right, you try, try again. And so since 6 tenths isn't fully reduced, that means we'll just reduce it one more time. So this is going to be 2 times 3, and this is going to be 2 times 5. So if I reduce this one fully, I'm going to get 3 fifths. But I got 3 fifths at the top as well. So what I know about these two players is they both have the same free throw percentage, or the same free throw ratio in this case. So which player is the better free throw, I should say free throw, sorry. Free throw shooter, um, both. They are equal. When reduced, they are equal. Okay, and so that brings us to our topic of proportion. If you have two equal ratios, that means they're proportionate. And so that's our next little group. So two proportions or two fractions, let me say two ratios, A over B and C over D, are equal if their diagonals are equal. So if you say A times D going the diagonal this way and B times C going the diagonal that way, if they're both equal, then you know that you're you have a proportion. So I ask you in this first one, is this a proportion, yes or no? So here's what you're going to do. First of all, you can reduce them. If they're fully reduced, like we did with Kara Lee and Sonia in my first example, if they reduce to give you the same number, of course they are, it is a proportion. But you can also do it this way. If I multi multiply across this diagonal, 2 times 12 is 24. If I multiply across this diagonal, 3 times 8 is 24. So since they are equal, this is a proportion. Okay, let's try the second one. If I multiply this part out, I get 30 times 7, which is 210. If I multiply this part out, I get 28 times 8, which is 224. What I see about these two is that they're not equal. Since, since those two products are not equal, that would be an answer of no. You could also do them by reducing. If you reduce 7 over 28, the number that you would get is 1 fourth. And if you reduce 8 over 30, the number that you would get is 4 fifteenths. And 4 fifteenths and 1 fourth are not are not equal. They're not equal fractions, and they can't be equal fractions. And so that's another way that you can tell. If they're not equal fractions, it's not a proportion. The easiest way is the product, though. Okay, so in my next example, I ask you, I tell you that they are a proportion. That means the equal is working there. And then the second way that you're going to do it is just to solve it out. And there's lots of different ways to try. I'm going to go back to what we just did with the product. So if I multiply across this product, I get 8x. 
And if I multiply across this diagonal right here, I get 12 times 10. So I get 120. Now to solve for x, all I have to do is solve that out. And so to solve that equation out, I'm going to divide by 8 on both sides. So x would equal 120 over 8. If I divide that out, it looks like this. So I get that x is 15. So in this case right here, x is 15. Now, like I said, there are other ways to do it as well, um, but that way is always going to work for you. Okay, so let's stay consistent. We'll work the top one. The numbers are just a lot bigger. So when I work this one out, I have 28 times 21. Hey, I'm going to check my math because I'm a little, um, little rusty today. I'm good with that one. So my pink diagonal brings 588. And my blue diagonal is a 49x. So I have 588 equals 49x. So to solve this equation, this is times. And the opposite of times is to divide. So I can divide 49 into 588. Now that looks really hard with those big numbers, but think of 49 as being really close to 50. If you get it as really close to 50, then uh, you know it's not too bad to, to estimate. So I know that 50 would go into 58 one time. So 1 times 49, we can look here. I can borrow here. Okay, if you're thinking about 50, thinking about 98, almost 100, 50 would go into 100 two times, so let's try that. So 2 times 49, and we got it. The answer is 12. So x would equal 12. Now, there's another way that you could think about that one as well if you didn't like that way. Think about it this way. I see that 28 over 49 is going to reduce. It's going to reduce by 7. So this fraction over here, if I reduced, 7 goes into 28 4 times, and 7 goes into 49 7 times. So this reduces. Now look at the other fraction. See how you have the 21 over there? If you could think about what did I turn 7, what did I multiply 7 by in order to get 21, it would be times 3. So if I multiplied on the bottom times 3, I'd have to also multiply on the top by 3. So 4 times 3 would be 12. And that's another way that you could get this answer of 12 if you wanted to work it that way. Okay, so then they start some word problems with the ratios. Let's see what all we got. Okay, so let's finish those out. Lee works four hours this week, and he gets paid $9.50 per hour. So $9.50 per hour is a ratio. So if you take $9.50 and you multiply it times the number of hours he worked, that's going to tell you how much he made. So I'll say zero here. 20, bring my two up. That's 36 and two would give me 38. Move my decimal two places over and he made $38. Okay, let's try the next one. Dr. Wynn can see 12 patients in two hours. Okay, so we can set up a rep a proportion of patients per hour. So Dr. Wynn can see 12 patients in two hours. The question says, 
how long would it take him to see 36 patients? How many hours, right? So hours is what we don't know. So he can see 12 patients in two hours. How long, number of hours, would it take him to see 36? So that's how you'd set it up. And as far as how you solve it, you can work it any, any of the ways that I've shown you. I'm going to work it the diagonal way. So if I multiply this way, I get 12x. And if I multiply this way, I get 36 times 2. To solve that out, I'm going to divide by 12. And x would equal, we can divide it out. I think it's going to go 6 times. And it does. So he can see 36 patients in six hours. Now you can also work it the way that I talked to you earlier about setting it up as uh, reduced fractions. You can also just think about it this way. 12 times 3 would give me 36. So that means if I multiply by 3 on the top, I have to also multiply by 3 on the bottom. So 2 times 3 would give me 6. So you could also work it out that way. Alright, which is the better buy? You have one gallon of orange juice for $2.72. But you have four quarts of orange juice for 48 cents per quart. Okay. So we need to see how much one gallon costs in both of these scenarios. So this is one gallon over here. I don't have to do any work. But remember, four quarts is a gallon. So if I take 0 0.48 per quart, and I multiply it by four, because that's the number of quarts in a gallon, 16 plus 3 would be 19. Remember, I moved it two places. That means I moved it two places here. So if I bought them separately in quart form, I would pay $1.92 for the orange juice as opposed to $2.72. So this is the better buy. And that's how we would do that. Okay, and lastly, they start talking about percent.